Welcome to Highlands Presbyterian Church. We hope you enjoy listening to the message for today. We are going back to basics as our theme for the year. Each week we will add another brick as we build on the layers. Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you this morning and for anyone who's going to be watching online a bit later. So a few weeks ago, Peter Lamb shared on the topic of praise and how praise can be or can be used as a spiritual weapon. And then last week, Reverend Gary Kai spoke on the topic of worship. There are three elements to this. There's thanksgiving, praise, and worship. So, as you can imagine, each of these topics are quite vast, and the trick is to narrow down to something that is perhaps relevant and something that we can use daily or even just take home from today. So according to the Strong's definitions, um, Strong's is a concordance that um, does help occasionally to expand on a few things. So the Hebrew word for thanksgiving is tudah. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And this means confession, praise, and offering. So when we give thanks in the truest sense of the biblical word, we offer God our praises We acknowledge to him that he is the giver of all good gifts. It is not about who we are, but instead about who God is. And it is much easier to give thanks when all is going well. And this is natural. We're happy, we're positive, and therefore should acknowledge God's goodness in our lives. Thankfulness can bubble up and overflow in your life. If... You can muster up the energy to give thanks when you're at your deepest and darkest moment. That is a sacrifice of praise. You acknowledge that God is good, is still God, despite the tough circumstance. You give thanks in your weakest moment, going against every fiber of your being that screams out that life is just not fair. The Lord hears your heart. I have shared a few times before with the HPC family my battle with depression or mental health issues, as they call it today. And so I know how hard it is to give thanks from the bottom of a deep, dark pit. I often use music when I'm unable to do anything, even read my Bible. This may not be your way of coping, but I know that it helps me. One of my go-to songs at the moment is a song called Gratitude by an artist or a Christian artist called Brandon Lake. I'm just going to read some of the lyrics with you. He sings, All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end and you never do. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again because all I have is a hallelujah, a hallelujah. I know it's not much, but I've got nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Throw up your hands and praise the Lord in the good moments and in the bad moments. The gospel is our everlasting reason to give thanks. The greatest gift from God is salvation by grace through faith. We can be thankful for God's unconditional love for us. We can thank him for sending his son, Jesus, who paid the price for sin that no good works or intentions on our behalf could ever pay. As Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we can thank him for the eternal life that he has given us. But, of course, because God is always good, we can always find more room in our hearts to be grateful to him. This may take some serious digging in the darkest seasons of trials and suffering. But because God is always with the ones he redeems through faith, we can trust that he's doing good in our lives, in the big, the small, and the often unexpected ways. There are so many scriptures and examples in the Bible to choose from. So I decided that simple is better. And Psalm 100 gives five concrete commands on how to thank God. 
make a joyful noise, serve the Lord, come into his presence, know the Lord, and bless his name. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Make a joyful noise. A fitting first command to come from a hymn begins by saying, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. The basic principle is that once you come to know the Lord and fellowship with him, you can't but help make a joyful noise. Some other translations say shout for joy, but the idea of it still stands. One cannot simply sit in silence when you comprehend that God has given you himself. The almighty, sovereign Lord knows and loves you. Simply, this idea simply cannot be extinguished. In fact, the entire earth must come to know of it and to join in. Reverend Garakai alluded to this last week in that even nature knows how to give thanks and praise the Lord. So one of my most favorite examples of thanksgiving is King Jehoshaphat's response to some very overwhelming news. Jehoshaphat is honest in his conversation with God. They were in serious distress. And he says, we have no power to face this vast army, this overwhelming situation. He says, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you, Lord. I just love this honesty. And as a leader of the nation, He acknowledges that only God can come to their rescue, so they will keep their eyes on God and not on the problem. God responded, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Go out and face them. Now, this can be quite a scary prospect for some, especially if what you are facing is vast and overwhelming. But what you are facing right now could feel like a vast army. But do be encouraged that God is with you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So after God's response, Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and the people followed in worship and praise. They then stood and praised the Lord with loud voices. Joseph then sent people singing God's praises in front of the army that was marching into battle. So band, that's your job, okay? You march in front singing and praising, and we'll follow. (laughs) It is not often that we thank the Lord for the victory before we've seen any results or we even know the outcome of the situation. To stand in God's presence, to stand firm, to stand to praise. What a testimony to God's faithfulness. So another familiar example of joyful noise continues with the Apostle Paul. Even in prison, Paul and Silas spent their nights singing praises to the Lord while the other prisoners listened to them. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners listened in. I do hope they joined as well. (laughs) The Jews originally sang psalms when they were in the temple. They knew God from all his miraculous actions amongst them, from bringing them out of Egyptian slavery to helping David expand the kingdom. However, they did not have the revelation that believers have today. John, Peter, Paul, and Silas made their joyful noises because God himself had been in their midst and now God's own spirit was within them. Jesus died for their sins and was resurrected, and with his resurrection, Jesus promises or promised eternal life, freedom from sin, 
divine fellowship and restoration to all who believe and live accordingly. This news far out proclaims any news ever heard. For this reason, it is called the good news, the gospel. We are commanded to make a joyful noise. Now, this is where my sense of humor kicks in. Joyful noise. Perhaps it will be a noise in our ears, but a beautiful melody in the ears of our Heavenly Father. So one of the easiest ways to thank the Lord is to sing praises to Him. Sing songs of praise around the house, in your car, on your walk, in your quiet time. As we thank Him with song, we repeat the truth about Him to ourselves and to others that might hear us. We are blessed with renewed minds as we worship and thank our Heavenly Father. How incredible is that? Serve the Lord. The second fruit of thanksgiving after joyful noise is service to the Lord. The hymn continues with the second command, serve the Lord with gladness. This hymn encourages us to serve the Lord with a heart that is motivated by gladness. Although short, the second command gives a profound formula for service that is pleasing to the Lord. The outward action of service must be a result of an inward motivation of gladness. So the outward action of service must be the result of an internal motivation of gladness. So what is the source of this gladness? For a believer, gladness, along with a joyful noise, is motivated by Christ Jesus. But you can ask, what is there to be glad for? After all, the world is so full of evil and misery and sadness and hardship, it is sometimes hard for us to realize that despite the very real reality of evil on earth, there is a greater reality of love in heaven. This is hard because evil seems more palatable and in our faces, and yet heaven seems so far off. But we are a temporary sojourner in this present world full of evil. We do have an eternal home being prepared for us by our lovingly Heavenly Father. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit is our constant companion. This is the source of our gladness here and now. So this gladness should produce service. So how may you serve the Lord and others, perhaps even in ways that you've not realized yet for yourself? In what ways can you use the gifts and talents that you have? And it's not an excuse. We all have something that we can do and that equips us for service. What is an area here at Highlands Presby that you can help with or assist in? We would love for you all to feel that you belong and that you can contribute in some way. Is there perhaps an area of service that we are lacking? Please do let us know so that we can put something into action and that you can feel a part of God's family. Psalm 100 reminds us that one shows gratitude by serving the Lord. This service is motivated by gladness for the things for which the Lord has done for you. The third is come into his presence. The same verse which bids us to serve the Lord also asks that one comes into the Lord's presence with singing. The hymn continues with come into his presence with singing. To a modern day believer, coming into the Lord's presence may mean nothing more than closing one eyes and praying, or maybe going to church on a Sunday. For the Jews who sang this hymn in that time, however, the idea of coming into the Lord's presence was a terrifying one. Generally speaking, a Jew at the time of this hymn could only enter the Lord's presence by entering a room in the temple called the Holy of Holies. This was the innermost room found within the temple of Jerusalem. 
It was only accessible to the Israelites' high priest chosen at the time. This priest would only be able to enter this room once a year on the Day of Atonement to burn incense and to sprinkle sacrificial animal blood. The Day of Atonement was considered to be one of the most solemn of all events. The Holy of Holies was separated by a thick veil from the rest of the temple. So being in the Lord's presence was very serious, and the people of the psalmist's day were in awe of their sovereign Lord. And perhaps today, we've just lost a little bit of this reverence for the Lord's presence. However, we are truly blessed, and at the moment of Jesus' death, the scriptures attest that the veil within the temple which separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the world has or was torn. Matthew's Gospel says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. So God's presence is no longer limited to the high priest once a year in a specific room within the Jewish temple. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross washes all believers clean of their sins and makes them blameless in God's sight. So now God's presence can be accessed anywhere that there is a believer because God's presence is within the believer through the Holy Spirit. So through Jesus, we have an awesome gift of being in the Lord's presence each and every day. That is something to be thankful for. Spend time soaking up his wonderful presence. As you start your day, as you wake up in the morning, let your first words be thanksgiving to your Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving me yet another day. Thank you for making me your own. Thank you that whatever this day holds, I can rest secure in the good news of your salvation. It could be hard for you to remember to begin the day in conversation with the Lord. So maybe write something out. Put a piece of paper near your bed, on top of your phone, (laughs) or on your bedroom mirror, or by your coffee cup, whatever it is that you do when you start your day. But start the day in conversation with your Heavenly Father. The fourth is know the Lord. So after commanding a joyful noise, service, and entrance into the Lord's presence, Psalm 100 continues to ask us to know that the Lord is God. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us. We are His, His people, the shepherd of His pasture. Sorry, the sheep of His pasture. So through Jesus, all people, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, social economic status, etc., can be God's people through faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, the Lord calls his people by a specific name now, that is, the church. All members of the church are members of the body of Christ. We are saved believers which find our life in Jesus. We are the fruit and Jesus is the vine. We are the sheep, Jesus is the shepherd. We are the students, Jesus is the teacher. We are his people, and he is our king. We are his children, and he is our father. Knowing this should bring Psalm 100 into a special light for us. Through Jesus, who is the only mediator between God and man, a believer can come to know God personally. Man is no longer only able to know about God. He is able to literally fulfill this hymn's command and know God as a person, fellowship, relationship with him. God is him who created all people, including believers. God is him who brought believers into his fold. God is him who pastures his sheep. God is the ultimate king and the ultimate shepherd. Believers have this great privilege of being his sheep 
which was bought at the priceless death of Jesus Christ on the cross. This personal relationship between God and man begins with Jesus. Jesus bridges together sinful man and a perfect God. Jesus is the foundation through which man can come into God's presence. Christ is he who allows man to build a genuine and personal relationship with God. It is through Jesus that fellowship with the almighty creator and governor over the universe can be had. No, the Lord. And then five, bless his name. The final action which Psalm 100 asks of us is to be thankful and to give praise and to bless God's name. The psalmist continues by saying, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Thanksgiving, praise, and blessings all come hand in hand. By thanking God through praise and blessing, God has been acknowledged as the giver. It makes no sense to thank somebody for something that they did not do. One gives thanks to someone who deserves it. Likewise, giving thanks to God is giving him that which he rightly deserves. By thanking God, one reaches beyond the gift to the giver. Theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote of thankfulness in this way, it is only the humble which can receive something as a gift. The proud will only take what is their due. In humility, we accept that we are in need of a savior. Pride can refuse to accept this precious gift, and this is a dangerous place to be. If you perhaps in this place, please do speak to someone, an elder perhaps, share your heart, your hurts, your anger, your sorrow, and allow the Lord to heal your heart. He loves you too much to let you go. So Psalm 100 gives us five concrete commands as to how we are to thank God. We make a joyful noise. We serve the Lord. We come into his presence. We know that he is the Lord, and we bless his name. These five things are a direct, direct result of knowing the Lord for who he truly is. That is why the psalm, after listing off how to give thanks to the Lord, it simply ends with an acknowledgement of who he is, and it finishes with, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The Lord is truly good. Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross testifies to this. The Lord is truly steadfast in his love for us. The promise of eternal life testifies to this. The Lord is truly faithful to all generations. Anyone who believes will be saved. So we live each day in the steadfast love of our Lord. How can we not give thanks? So today's brick is thanksgiving. If there's anyone here today that has had to dig into the deepest parts and still give the Lord thanks despite the tough circumstances that they're facing, if that is you and you'd like to take ownership of the brick of thanksgiving, please come forward. So I'm just going to give thanks to Lorraine. She's gone through some tough stuff in her life that I'm sort of aware of some of it. And yet she can still sing praises to the Lord. And I think that is just truly a profound way. So we're going to close this time by saying the Lord's Prayer. However, <laughs> we're going to do it a little bit differently. And we're going to slow it down. We're going to say each line or each part at a time. And I'm going to pause, and I would really like you to think about what you have just said. So if you'd like to bow your heads, close your eyes. Take this time to pause, to think.
to rest in the Lord's presence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for listening. Your tithe or offering is greatly appreciated. Please see the bank details attached.